Phoenix police confirming they are serving warrants to test the DNA of all men working at Hacienda Healthcare. And the care facility says they actually talked with attorneys to see if they could force their workers to get tested and that it would have violated federal law. So now we've got a court order compelling them. Maria Hechenova talked with a DNA expert who explains how it all works. Maria. Well, first, I do want to confirm that the spokesperson for Hacienda says the Phoenix police did serve a search warrant to them today to get those male staffers, uh, give them their DNA. Now, here's the thing. Many experts have told us detect detectives are likely to do that from potential suspects, people who had access to the woman's room nine months ago. And today, a DNA analyst who has worked in state and local crime labs broke down what could be happening really behind the scenes. DNA analyst Debbie Epstein is not involved in the Hacienda investigation, but has tested hundreds of DNA samples of homicide suspects and rapists in her 20 plus year career. This is a buckle swab collection kit. In her experience, she predicts detectives are using cheek swab kits to collect from potential suspects because it's less invasive than taking blood. This is essentially a large Q-tip um, that's packaged in a sterilized manner. You just need to rub the inside of the cheek and you should collect enough buccal cells from that to produce a DNA profile. She says gathering the DNA this way is simple. 30 seconds or less. However, getting the results. Ideally, it can be done in a day, but laboratories have backlogs. After detectives collect mom and baby's DNA, they'll match half of the baby's DNA to mom, and whatever is left over will create dad's DNA profile. She says it's likely the father's DNA profile has already been created and will be run through the FBI database to check if he's been in trouble with the law before. But without knowing how many men would have had access to the victim's room about nine months ago. In this case, the investigators may get lucky. They may identify the perpetrator within, you know, the first couple of weeks. Um, but if they don't, they could be collecting dozens of samples from individuals that had access to this person. 